Yak Gadget, made in America, based outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Yak Gadget offers all kinds of storage accessories, quick mount motor mounts, anchor systems, track mounted accessories, even paddles. Go to yakgadget.com and get your kayak decked out for your next trip out on the water. The 153 Bay Company, based in Troy, Ohio, make everything from plastics to custom painted hard baits. Hook them hard and hook them off. All of our baits are made to order and all of our hard baits are hand painted to order. So go to the 153anglers.com to place your order today. Based in Santa Ana, California, BioAno Power provides the highest performance lithium ion phosphate batteries for the marine market. These batteries are one quarter the weight of sealed lead acid batteries, provide over 2,000 to 3,000 charge cycles, and a 10 plus year service life. These batteries can be used for any deep cycle application, including running fish finders, trolling motors, live wells, and LED lights. For more information, visit BioAnoPower.com. That's B I O E N N O P O W E R.com. Or contact dealers nationwide welcome to the paddle and fin podcast network this is the final cast segment with your hosts brad hicks and josh eldridge where we cast our final opinions on all products good and bad welcome to the final cast you're listening to the final cast on paddle and fin podcast network i'm brad What's up? I'm Josh. What's up, man? How you doing? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Got a cool uh, episode lined up today, man. For we're gonna sure, be talking. Sure. Up, we're we're gonna be talking about Motor Guide with Shane Lamont. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Yeah, you got it right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of awesome. people say lemon, so that's good. Yeah. Well, I saw the 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 M uppercase. So I was like, yeah, I got nice. it. Attention to detail. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I, I got it right because I forgot to ask you before we started recording. <laughs> oh, you hit it, dude. Good job. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, yeah, dude, you want to start off uh, telling us a little bit about yourself, how you got into kayaks and uh, kayak fishing, all this, all that stuff? Yeah. First, Brad, Josh, thanks for having me on the show. I'm stoked for tonight. Should be a fun one. Uh, so basically, I started off at a young age, maybe around the age of 13 or so, 12, when I first started bass fishing kind of trout fish before that with my grandpa and uh, one of my family friends for a while. But then I got into float tube fishing and I float tubed for, I float tube for probably, man, probably close to 10 years. Uh, I was in a caddis and then I got in a fish cat four and I've just fished a local lake around, um, around SoCal and caught, you know, caught a lot of fish on a Texas rig worm. That's pretty much what I learned how to fish with at first. And then, didn't think fish bit anything else <laughs> except that Texas rig worm. And uh, that's kind of just how I fell in love with fishing is just getting out of my float tube, you know, being in nature and just hanging out with some buddies that did the same float tube thing with me. And then I actually started an Instagram account. It's called Bass Thumbs Fishing. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because when I first started it, I kind of started it as a joke. My slogan, keep your thumbs ripped. It kind of picked up traction kind of organically. And uh, I started to get followers and followers and i was like well this is really cool and then people started to send me pictures of their thumbs and they started to send me pictures of their fish and i kind of turned into like a reshare page in the beginning and it, i just gained a, a pretty decent following on social media and i just started to do youtube a little bit out of my float tube i had a like a pvc kind of thing over my over my head and i was recording myself in my float tube for a little bit and it was really fun and then i just fun fished for like that 10 years and um and just because of all that, I just kept falling more in love with it. And then I saw the the ad for Bonafide Kayaks when they first came out. And I saw that guy standing up and I was like, dude, I have to be able to get into one of those kayaks. Like I, I loved it as soon as I saw the promo video when they first came out. So I reached out to the guys at Bonafide on their Instagram. And because of my following, I was able to kind of get on their on their team early and got a little deal and was able to purchase my first kayak, which was an SS 127. And then from, from there I was, I started paddling and I was like, man, this is pretty tough to paddle and fish, especially out here in SoCal. We got deep, clear reservoirs. It gets windy. Uh, it's just, it's kind of tough to get around paddling out here. It's not like little back creeks and stuff, you know, it's like big lakes. And so, that gained my interest. I saw my buddy Alex Cox. Um, at the time, he wasn't my buddy, but I saw him on Instagram. 
he put a motor guide XI3 on his kayak and I was like, I have to have that thing. It has pinpoint GPS. And I, and I was like, dude, I have to get that. So I started to become friends with him, put one on like two years ago, gained a relationship with motor guide. And then I kind of got introduced into competitive kayak fishing at one of the local clubs out here, SoCal kayak anglers. And then that started to just continue to grow my passion for competing. And now we're coming here today and I'm fortunate enough to be going to Texas in a couple of weeks and fishing pretty much the biggest tournament that kayaks kind of have right now is the Bass Nation Kayak Series. Mm -hmm. I qualified up at Clear Lake last year in August and it's just going to be a really fun time. So I'm, that's kind of brings me to today. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate to have a really good relationship with motor guide. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you haven't been kayak fishing for very long then a few years. Yeah. Like two or three. Yeah. Like probably just over two years. <laughs> Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. How do you like it so far? I love it, dude. Especially, you know, I, I kind of got off of it a little bit, but at first paddling in the wind and stuff and trying to hold my spot was really hard. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I was like, there's got to be a better way to this. That's when I got the motor. And ever since I got the motor, it's just been like, you know, I've always wanted a bass boat growing up. And yeah. I really feel like having that bow mount on the front, you know, really um, helps that desire, you know, kind of be pushed off for a while. Cause mm -hmm. I really feel like I'm just on the front of the bass boat now, like all day long. And it's, it's really fun. Yeah. It's, it's one of the things cause you kind of, I don't know, you kind of laugh at the argument where people are like, Oh, you know, it's not, it's not true to kayaking, you know, not yeah. like whether like you're talking about pet pedal drives and or motors at this point. But I mean, dude, I tried, I tried to fish lakes. I tried and I tried and I tried and I hated it. I'm like, it's just, it doesn't take much wind. It, it really doesn't. It doesn't take it. And when it hits about 10, you're like, Psh. yeah, you know, like that's it, man. <laughs> like I can't get a cat. You can cast, but you're like, you're a center trying to work your bait. You're like that bait's moving so fast now. Like, because you're reeling it in on top of, you know, or you're just drifting it, but yeah. you know, like it's, it becomes it's too hard. It's too yeah. hard to keep position. It's too hard to be accurate. It's you blow away from your spots or onto your spots, you know? So it's like yeah. the, when pedal drives, you know, became popular and then, you know, the motors, I think the motors kind of really hit off due to the tournament scene, you know, yeah, it's sure. like they needed, you know, pe people are like getting serious about, you know, tournament fishing. You've got guys that are like, man, I need to get to point A to point B a lot faster. You know, I can't be out here paddling. Uh, you know, by, by the time I make this, you know, one mile track, I'm going to be, you know, crapped out, man. My energy is going to be gone, you know, especially <laughs> yeah. if it's windy, you know, no, it's like, serious. you may not even make it. Like there's times yeah. I've paddled, a, try to paddle across the lake. I'm like, I don't even know I can make it, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> see, I, I, I was in that same boat last year, uh, paddling in this 25 mile an hour wind for a tournament and. My shoulder hurt so bad that after that day, I was like, I got to do something. I'm getting me a motor and I haven't looked back since. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I tell a lot of people like you spend so much time with the paddle in your hand, trying to position yourself mm -hmm. that you're missing out on so many casts. And I feel like that's one of the advantages that a pedal guy has over a paddle guy is that the pedal guy is hands free and he's just casting and casting and casting. And, you know, that's the advantage I feel like from pedal to paddle. So now the motor just takes, the i guess the energy on your body away from that mm -hmm. and you're able to you know get a lot more casts in and more casts mm -hmm. i mean people say well does it really help you catch more fish oh yeah, well, yeah because you're you're baits in the water longer <laughs> right i mean it, it, people are like and they're like well that doesn't make you a better angler it doesn't make you a better angler you know what i mean that's all about yeah. map study that's all about picking the right baits i mean we all know fishing is a mix of skill and luck you know? sure. and game and, of numbers the game of numbers yeah and yeah. equipment I mean, yeah. you know, like, and I'm not saying that that makes anybody better, but you, all you do is increase your odds, your chances, you get more casts, you get that lure in the water, it stays in the water, it's, you're not sitting there, because there's nothing worse than casting once, repositioning, casting once, repositioning, <laughs> casting once, and I hate anchoring, I'm not a fan of anchors, like, I have them, but... I mean, to be honest with you, they're, they're dangerous in kayaks, you know, mm -hmm. especially with me yeah. and Brad being river guys. Um, you know, they've always, I've heard a lot of people say, uh, Jeff Little is real notorious for saying it, you know, the least amount of cordage you can have, you know, mm -hmm. in your boat, the better, um, for sure. you know, so 
But dude, I, Josh, I'm glad you brought that up really quick because yeah. that's one of the sweetest things about the motor guide is that it's completely wireless. Like I have yeah. a little remote at the bottom of my life jacket and my buddy Alex actually runs the wireless foot pedal on his new canoe pursuit because the pursuit's super wide. He mm -hmm. positions it up to the left a little bit and he's able to use the wireless foot pedal on his kayak oh, and he's cool. completely hands-free. So that was one of the things that intrigued me too. And I'm glad you said that there's no rudder system. There's no, you know, there's no extra things. It's just literally your motor in the front, your battery's in the back and there's nothing in me. There's everything's in the kayak. So yeah, yeah, that's something. Josh, uh, I did a river float with Chris Yalk a few weeks ago and I decided to uh, take the motor down the river. I knew, I know it sucks for carrying and portaging and all that stuff, but yeah. dude, doing nice. doing a float with a, a motor is fun. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I mean, I, I was, I'm, you, you know how fast the current is going through some of these bridges and stuff. I was yeah. anchored down in that spot just casting 30 minutes straight, didn't yeah. even have to position. It's and Brad, that, that pinpoint keeps you pretty straight as long as you're facing into the wind a little bit mm -hmm. or, you know, once it kind of sets itself, like, I mean, I don't move at all. I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't move at all once I hit that anchor button. Oh, I don't either. Unless I'm trying to cast towards somewhere and then I'm pointed towards which way the wind's blowing from, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. Which isn't a big deal. Cause like the bonafide so stable, you could just turn and, you know, stand sideways. Yeah, for Same sure. With new canoe, but what I like to do a lot of times too, is like, honestly, like I use the anchor mode quite a bit, but one of the things that I do a lot of is like, I just make like small little adjustments as I'm casting on a spot. Cause like you said, like instead of turning sideways, having the motor, having the, the boat, you know, position the wind and you're casting sideways. What I do is I take the anchor mode off and I kind of position myself and I've gotten so used to it. It's like second nature to me that I make small little adjustments as I'm kind of working a bank methodically or whatever it is. So something else that you kind of get used to as, as the more time you spend with it, you kind of understand, like you can, you can kind of like back up into your, into yourself and, and know when to cast and when not to cast kind of thing. It's, it's, I don't know. The more yeah. time you spend, the, the, the more you'll understand that. Yeah. I'm starting to get the hang of it. Um, I, I had it on a new canoe pursuit at the end of last year, but then I, I took it off. I didn't end up liking that as much as the bonafide uh, switch back to the bonafide this year and put it on. I'm like, Oh man, this is like the perfect setup for me. Yeah. And then one objective just, you know, they, they've been just doing incredible with all their mounts. They cover mm -hmm. like native Hobie vibe, bonafide like it's just it's so sick that that's the first thing that people say is like well what kind of mount should i get and one objective you know has that has that covered for sure so that was pretty sweet they need to start making something for old town my buddy was looking for one and he ended up selling his old town because nobody made a mount for it yeah well they got that autopilot minn kota so <laughs> yeah <I don't> <laughs> yeah but the <laughs> they don't have it on the no, they don't have it on every kayak. Like he had a top water. So yeah, he yeah. Wanted, he wanted an XI three on the top water. Yeah, but. no, that makes sense. One of the rubs about like I think the autopilot is is super sweet, but one of the rubs is a forty five pound thrust. So my buddy yeah. Anthony, he has one. He's on their team, and he gets like three point eight miles an hour. And I'm just like, I mean, it's oh, it's man. nice, but forty five pound thrust. I'm sure they're gonna come out with a fifty five pound or something soon, but. Mm -hmm. Cause I got a 55 pound and I go about 4.5, 4.6. I don't know yeah. about what you get. Yeah. That's what you get. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah with the fle flex wings and everything. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I'm about the same, yeah. which, which is pretty quick. I mean, even with a torpedo on there, I was going five. So it's not yeah. that big of a difference, you know, I, yeah, and I, nice. I just think you're getting more with motor guide than over a torpedo, but that's just me. Yeah. And then you got the 100 amp hour battery, whatever lithium battery you decide to go with. I mean, mm -hmm. the 100 amp lithium, it, it lasts me. I've never killed it personally. I've heard of some guys killing it in a day, but that has to be like insane current and you're running it all day long and yeah. you're pushing it to the max because I ran it for 16 hours before and on one charge. And I ran a Dakota lithium 100 amp. Mm -hmm. And so, and then with the weight of the lithium, it was just like a match made in heaven because you got like a 32 pound motor on the front. That's about what the XI3 weighs. And then the lithium battery, like 29 to 31. So it, it kind of counterbalances itself pretty good. Mm -hmm. So it was just a match made in heaven. Because when I first started out, 
I had like a huge lead acid 60 amp hour like oh, 70 pound battery because that's all i could afford at the time yeah you know what i mean and then that was dying really fast and the cool thing about a lithium battery is that it'll it'll go 100 percent till it's dead mm -hmm. but when you have a lead acid battery you know once you kind of get you know towards the last quarter of the battery you just slow down and then you mm -hmm. see that blinking red light on the motor guide and you got like three miles to get back to the launch yeah and it dies and then you bust your paddle out and yeah <laughs> it's happened a couple of times when i had that lead acid i was gonna say the uh lithium battery doesn't it's not compatible with the battery indicator on the motor is it it just it just dies That's a good I question i've never pushed it that far yet which i probably should but if it's a it's a hundred percent at all times, so it probably yeah. Won't. yeah I, probably I killed my true. battery once, and it the indicator didn't come on. I was just like, "What just happened?" You had a hundred <laughs> amp, and you killed it. Yeah, well, that was I. I went two trips up and down the river, so six oh, okay. miles, twelve miles total. Ended yeah, up dying. But how many hours do you think you're in? Oh man. 16 18 something like yeah. that yeah that's pretty that's pretty good yeah josh you're about to say something my bad no i was i was just saying yeah i wouldn't see why that indicator light would even come on because it's probably just a warning that it's not running its full voltage you know so because i mean I, I laugh at all the time when i've got my dakotas hooked up to um i have a uh like um a little voltage meter that i'll mm -hmm. plug in um and on it has a usb so i also run like uh, a dakota lithium for my gopros because i have them externally wired and i'll look down at that thing and it's always at 13.7 to 13.4 volts like it and it yeah. stays like that until it dies it doesn't yeah. ever change so yeah. um it's uh it's probably just it's probably tied into that brad you'll probably never see that light come on if you're running yeah which i mean isn't maybe a big deal. maybe really kind of towards the end or something maybe but i don't think like you're not going to see it like shane was commenting like you would on a an sla where you know it can read that that voltage is getting like in the nine the eight you know seven six volts you know down to the bottom so yeah um brad what what plugs are you using on your on your uh connections uh i think i think they're atwood plugs maybe okay. they're not the marinco ones that everybody told me to get because one thing that would be interesting for everyone that's listening right now is that i've done you know almost two years of r&d with a bunch of my other friends that all have the motor and i've even talked to sam about this at motor guide and atwood they're all connected with each other just so everyone knows that but um those plugs that they recommend Mm -hmm. are not good and you will burn those plugs up yeah it's gonna happen to you it's happened to me like multiple times i've had to carry new plugs with me you know it's one of the things that we kind of hear quite quite often is that you know the plugs are burning up mm -hmm. and so one thing that we've kind of changed to recently and i'm going to give credit to ramel um the wizard i don't know if you've if you've seen him before ramel lab labador i think his name is yeah, see those ones right there, man. Like those ones will burn up. And I'm, oh, well, I'm, that's I'm good to know being, because that's what I'm, I'm just being that. honest. Yeah, I'm just being honest. So one thing that we've all changed to because of Ramel, um, kind of you know started this with my buddy Danny and Alex, and now I've been running it for like almost like six months now. Are Anderson plugs? And before you kind of say like what Anderson plugs, uh, what what we use right now they're called PowerWorks and they're SB50, so they're pretty heavy duty. And um, the connection on those Anderson plugs, they kind of click into each other really tight. They have waterproof casing on them, so that it won't get, you know, they won't get wet. And those have been just exceptional so far for, for a lot of us that have been running it for a while and that had problems with the other plugs in the past. So just something to kind of consider. Um, that's what we've been using when we rig all of our kayaks over at Kayak Fish Supplies. We've been using, we're going to be using Anderson plugs from, you know, from here on out. And I know that Sam and Motor Guide, you know, they are working on trying to come out with some sort of different plug right now. But um, just something to kind of think about, you know, because wiring is literally like probably like the most important thing that you guys 
whoever's installing your motor or if you're mm -hmm. installing as a DIYer, it's literally like the most important factor of it because if you mm -hmm. use the wrong gauge wire or if you use the wrong plug and you're out there, it's just going to be frustrating because, you know, your plugs aren't going to work and mm -hmm. it's going to cause more havoc. You know, there's nothing worse. Every time I get on the water, the first thing I say is when I, when I plug my plugs in, and my battery turns on, I go, well, that's a good start. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing Jeez. worse than plugging that plug in, lines in, or launch is like 10 minutes away, and nothing happens. It's, it's oh. the worst. But yeah, as that long as you have the right stuff, you know, you got you to gotta have the right gauge wire. So, like, what, what Motor Guide recommends is that it comes stock with 10-gauge wire off the motor, mm -hmm. and it comes with, like, I think a three-foot. It's, like, three-foot in length. So mm -hmm. what you do is, is you kind of – you know, see how long your wire is that you want to go to your first plug, snip that off. And then what guys do is they use that extra wiring as a pigtail on the back end for your battery. Cause when you're running that power short distance, you just need a 10 gauge wire. It's just short. But when you're running it through the boat, um, we use eight gauge wire and we use like this. Um, let's see, we use this stuff called like flat duplex wire. And, mm -hmm. and it's like marine grade. So it's like in a white casing and the red and black wire together. So that way you don't have like two wires going throughout your whole boat. It's just one wire going through. That's a good so idea. Just some wiring kind of tips to for the guys that are yep. listening. I'm glad you mentioned the gauge wire thing because a lot I see a lot of people have that issue. They're using eight gauge. And uh, I believe it's over a distance. Like anything under five foot, is your eight gauge is good, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then if you're over, if you're over five feet, five foot, you want to use six, right? No, no, no. Like f five foot. Cause if your kayak's like typical kayaks, 12 feet. And if you're going from mm -hmm. front to back, most guys put, I put my battery as far back as possible just so that mm -hmm. I can counterbalance the motor. Like yeah. I talked about earlier, but you can run eight gauge from the front to the back, eight okay. gauge straight to the back. And oh. you don't want too many different wires going on. So just, 10 from the first plug, eight to the second plug, and then 10 up to your battery and you'll be, you'll be okay. good. I, I think I overkilled it. A 60 amp breakers for sure. Yeah. yeah. I think I overkilled it with mine. I, I, I ran six gauge. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> we'll see what happens to that plug. Yeah. I, I hope, I hope, I don't know. <laughs> he's gonna be, he'll be replacing it. <laughs> After you told him that he's like, I don't want it to come out there in a bonafide. It's got this big melted, glob out of it but i'm gonna be i'm gonna be uh, uh i'm gonna be uh whatever you call it blowing my air horn you know like yeah, right, yeah. Signaling for somebody my boat's on fire on the water yeah yeah <laughs> um well let's talk kind of about like where how motor guide got kind of involved uh with kayaking because you know we'd seen like Minn Kota had been paired has been paired up with old town for quite some time um, but they were really kind of the premier as far as trolley motor. You had Bixby and, you know, we have Torquedo, but those, in, in a sense, I want to almost classify that as the outboard for kayaks, right? Um, those things, it's not G GPS tied in. It, you know, we've, we had guys that were doing a lot of DIY projects. So for years, you know, buying mounting systems in the back, kind of doing the same thing, you know, treating it like almost like an outboard. Yeah. But you know, the whole idea of running it on the front came about, you know, and I think you kind of mentioned that we had, well, you had Minn Kota doing it with Old Town, but that was almost sitting in the middle of the boat. That's not, bow, you know, mounted at all. And yeah. then you saw the kind of partnership with Motor Guide and New Canoe happen. But there was a lot of guys that had been, you know, buying the bigger or buy, there wasn't the, the 36 inch or whatever, whatever size it is. that's meant for kayaks. Yeah. You know, they're buying yeah. 48s and trimming them down. So, you know, you want to talk about where a motor guy was like, you know what, let's just, let's make a different version of this for these guys, you know, so let's, so they don't have to bother with it. Yeah. So I mentioned off the show, like new canoe and motor guide are, have pretty much been in bed since the beginning. They've kind of been like the boat that is a literally like an open concept boat. It has, a perfect spot for the mount. They actually, New Canoe pretty much was the first people to kind of make a mount for the nose of a kayak too. So that's kind of how they got into the kayak scene. With the XI3, when they first designed it, I feel like the, it wasn't meant for a kayak, but with that relationship with New Canoe, they, it kind of happened by default, especially since it was wireless, like I talked about earlier, which was very important. And then 
they had the 48 inch shaft and i really feel like once it started to really gain traction and guys like myself and other guys with social media followings and it, and it just kind of started to blow up drew gregory put it on his boat a lot mm. of you know bigger names started to put on their boats and the main question that people were giving motor guide and, and myself all the time was how do i cut the shaft will it void the warranty and it just became like this ongoing kind of issue and so it was exciting for motor guy to kind of release the same exact motor it's a 55 pound gps but they released it in a 36 inch based off of a lot of our you know recommendations 36 inch was like the perfect length for mm -hmm. almost any kayak that you could do even a hobie anything that sticks up a little bit higher 36 inches perfect for for that when i first cut mine it was 32 and it was a little bit too short but 36 was perfect so it was exciting for them to kind of come out with that product and kind of make a, a statement like you know this is our kayak motor now instead yeah. of what motor do i buy that's kind of out of the wind that's kind of out now it's the kayak xi3 motor that's being sold mm -hmm. so that's kind of how it it got into the kayak scene i would say and then one objective like i said has done a great job because that was this th th that was the next thing was mounting it and mm -hmm. then to go farther into it it's how do I stow and deploy this thing was the next biggest struggle. And, you know, there's some cool things coming out and that you're going to be able to kind of buy and, and just pull up and do it, stow and deploy it from straight from your seat. Hmm. Cause that's what kayak fish supplies that did with my boat. Nice. I took it to, I took it to their shop a year and a half ago before I started working for them. And I was like, Hey guys, I really think if you guys come up with a way to stow and deploy this thing from the seat, it could really be cool. And it could really, you know, turn some heads because not everyone wants to climb hands and knees on the front of their boat and yeah. push it into the water and, and do all that, you know. So they came out with a sweet way to – I literally have a little handle by my seat. I pull it. It releases the lever. And I'm able to use another cord to pull my motor up. And it's all from my seat. And I can <laughs> do the same thing deploying it. Dude, you're going to have to let me know about that. I want to do that to mine. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, so Kayak Fish Supplies actually sells a kit right now. It comes with instructions. Um, but there's, you know, there's something else that's coming that's a little bit cleaner and stuff and with some other companies. But they actually do sell a kit right now on their website, which is strictly for bona fides. Nice. You know, the length of the cord and the tension to pull that front piece down and the little metal tab they install under, everything – that they have is designed for a bona fide. All right. So that's okay. cool. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to go back to the warranty just cause I see a lot of people post this in the owner's group all the time, uh, mm -hmm. asking if cutting down the shaft does void the warranty. I talked to somebody on their, in, on motor guides, Instagram, they said it does void the warranty. So if you do go with like a 48 inch shaft or whatever, and you cut it down, don't do that. Yeah. Just, just get a kayak motor. <laughs> just get a kayak motor now. Yeah. That that whole problem is out the window. Just get the kayak motor. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's be, the same price. And be ready to wait because since these things came out, you know, it's been I mean, mm -hmm. it's been a waiting list from day one. So um, you know, try to, you know, figure out something else. Don't go buy the 48 and cut it down because you're just you're wasting your money at that point. So especially if something if something happens. You're not necessarily wasting your money, but if something happens at that point. You know, uh, you're kind of kind of screwed with it. But I mean, I, I, I was really kind of impressed with that because I remember kind of following along like, oh, this is a great idea. You know, um, I liked it a lot because at the time and I, right now, you know, I have a Kilroy HD and the Kilroy HD is pretty cool because it's got um, it's got a lot of gear tracks and on the front of the boat um it's got like a sea deck padding up there and on the top of that sea deck padding there's two uh two rails up there as well and i'm like man i bet you could build a mount for that rail system right there and be able to and make it removable you know fairly easily and not have to drill into any of the plastic and that sort of thing but yeah um but i like the idea of that um because of the wiring, you know, that was the one thing. Cause I've looked at doing big speeds. I looked at doing torquitos. I'm like still cordage. It's, there's still cordage behind yeah. me around where my mm -hmm. rods are. And I don't have the ability in that kayak to drill through, you know, through the inside of the kayak to bring cordage through. Yeah. You know, Cause it's just all open and For then sure. all my stuff's laying down there, you know? Yeah. So it's like, man, how can I do this? And I've, I've, I've been like, man, this, 
the XI3 is a great idea for that specific kayak. You know, I think it would, yeah. it would go really, it'd be a good thing to have it removable. So if I don't want to take it on the river, I could, but yeah, but definitely it was cool seeing, I was really impressed with them. I'm like, I really like, I like when companies that are in the fishing industry that have been established for a long time, take mm. notice to the popularity and attraction it, it can have in the kayak game and not ignore it. You know, like yep. Minn Kota did that, you know, years ago with old town. But I think they're aren't they in the same company? If I remember correctly, isn't Minnesota yeah. and Old Town owned by like the same yeah. major company? Yeah. But I mean, that's still that's still a good idea though. Let's still collaborate here, yeah. you know, because this the kayak game is only going to keep getting bigger because it opens doors for people to get off the bank but not have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a boat, you know, and you know, especially for people in the Midwest, like you know, having a boat's great and all, but you know there's a solid probably three to four months that it's sitting in storage for a lot of people, you know, for sure. And that's just an added, you know, expense, you know, yeah. where do I store this thing or it's taking up room in your garage or whatever, but yeah. And one thing too, that I really like kind of like what you just said is like, you know, you can spend, this kind of sounds like a lot at first, but like $6,000, let's just say 6,000, maybe 7,000. And you can have like, the best electronics that are out there you could have the xi3 with the gps pinpoint you could literally have like an insane deck of a bass boat as a kayak and it can go in your garage wherever you want to store it yeah like you said and it's it's just i don't know like i said earlier it's just um created that fix for me to not even i don't even think about a bass boat like at all anymore yeah. like it's not even yeah. like a thing for me especially with the, the competition and like you said it's growing it's fun to be a, it's fun to be a part of it you know, in the early stages too, because I, I, mm -hmm. I feel like we're still even in the early stages Yeah, and it's just, it's so fun, dude. Yeah. And you, you're not, you're not, you don't have a bunch of gas involved and maintenance yeah. and you know, it's just, and the it's bass just, boat scene is just like, so like you get, you get into that and you're like, it, there's just so many, there's so many yeah. different <laughs> clubs and tournaments and it's all, yeah. you know, everyone's already in that's in you know it's it's mm -hmm. it's tough to get started right now and go grab a bass boat and go yeah. try to go to the classic and you know what i mean it's, yeah. it's tough i just it's it's a cool you know it's cool to be a part of it because i've been doing it for well, i don't know brad what have we been doing this for i think you started in a kayak a little bit before me but yeah. brad and i were following in the same uh, fishing forum for years and it was funny because we lived like literally right down the street from each other <laughs> like i mean i could it took me like two minutes to get to brad's house and um but you know it's like it is i think i think it's still you know fairly young but you know for a motor guide to take that step it just you know they're just listening that's it's a good yeah. thing I, i'd like to see some other companies you know keep doing things like that because I think that it's only going to benefit them. You know, I think yeah. it's going to be like, Hey, you know, I mean, look at motor guy. They can't keep that stupid motor in stock. Like, <laughs> dude, it's like, like you just said yeah. at your outfitter store, you guys get 12 and they're accounted for, you yeah. know, <laughs> well, yeah. it's the same thing here too. I, I know raccoon right. Creek, they sell them and he's like, you bet you guys better hurry. They're going to go real fast. The next day they were going, you know, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. It's funny because some people send me a link. Actually, Home Depot actually sells them too. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, bro. Really? They're an Atwood yes. dealer. Yeah. Yep. They're a what dealer? Atwood. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's like all the accessories and all the other stuff that Mercury and Motor Guy, they're all mm -hmm. Mercury, Motor Guy, and Atwood are all this under each other. Dude, I'm gonna have to go. You said Home Depot. I gotta go over to Home Depot and be like, hey, <laughs> I don't know. If it's on stock, the website. But, yeah, it's on the website. I know I, I've seen people post in the bonafide owners group. They're like, I just got my motor on the website, Home Depot. <laughs> Home Depot pro staff, dude. <laughs> you got to hit up Home Depot. <laughs> no kidding. I love it. That's awesome. You <laughs> see Brad like wearing that bright ass orange shit all over the lake. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, and I'd be looking at his, on his red bonafide. And be like, look at that floating construction cone over there. <laughs> oh, who was that? Who was that NASCAR driver that drove for Home Depot? uh tony stewart. tony stewart yeah. yeah i'll be like tony stewart out on the water i'll put a big number on the side of my kayak <laughs> rapid uh, home depot <laughs> yeah and you know another cool thing too is like the motor when you when people first like kind of ask me like how much is it i go you know it's like 1279 dollars something like that 
And they're like, wow, that's not as expensive as I thought. But obviously, you got to get a battery and stuff. But at the end of the day, like, if you're if you're serious about kayak fishing, twenty seven hundred, three thousand dollars. I know it sounds mm-hmm. like a lot, but it is so worth it. Having the ability to stay on one spot has helped me tremendously. You know, in in my own small career, you know, I went up to Clear Lake and was able to sit on a rock pile and, mm-hmm. you know, throw that Nico rig wherever I wanted to just because I was staying on that one spot and I ended up taking fifth place there. And like, I have to like literally give all the credit to that motor because it's just completely like transformed and anyone that gets the motor and they take it out for the first time, there's just no doubt that it enhances your ability to, to catch more fish because you're like, we talked about earlier, your your lines in the water more. So it'll definitely be worth your investment. I know it's a tough pill to swallow maybe at first, and I kind of took baby steps to get to it, but it is 100% worth it. I've never heard anyone get it and be like, no, nah, this isn't, this isn't working for me. This isn't, this isn't, you know, helping me at all. Like th- there's none of that. Like the ability to, even when you catch your fish and you are measuring your fish, the last thing you want to worry about is where am I going? Cause your yeah. kayak just, you're looking at the fish and you're trying to take a picture and your kayak just goes anywhere it wants when you click that anchor mode you're you're right on them so mm-hmm. you're right where you're at so yeah completely and agree man the heading lock feature too i know we talked a little bit about it before brad but the heading lock feature is just insane like it works better when you are going slower if you're going 4.5 miles an hour and you click heading lock it kind of has a tendency to kind of go like this kind of go side to side a little bit mm-hmm. it'll still keep you fairly straight um but if you're going slow and working a bank with a chatterbait or crankbait and you're covering the shoreline and you the cool thing too about the motor guy is that it ha- it doesn't have like fast faster slow slow it it's like literally i w- I, I should know how many buttons it is from full speed to zero but yeah. i want to say it's like 15 somewhere in there it's like 15 different speeds that you can really dial in you know how fast you want to go and like I was saying earlier, the slower you go, the straighter it will keep you. And it is money when you're working a shoreline with a reaction bait for sure. Or any kind of bait, really. Uh, two things on that. I don't know if you saw my post that I made where I was, I, I, uh, I was on heading lock at full speed and I hit my buddy. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It, it, I, we were, did it go right? Yeah, we were side by side and I was just zigzagging. It just kept yeah. getting worse and worse and I, yeah. I hit him. <laughs> yeah but so i want to say it tries to i want to say it tries to to when you first hit it 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 wants to stay exactly where you where you pressed it so like by the time it registers like where you pressed it and where you hit it it so you have to kind of get used to Mm -hmm. a little bit of the direction of it unless you upgrade your whole unit and something else i kind of wanted to get into is there is a nema 2000 system and the gateway system that you can connect the XI3 to a Lowrance unit only. From what I understand from Motor Guide is that the Lowrance is the only unit that is compatible. I want to say the Elite Series is compatible and the HDS Live Series is compatible with it. When I first put my motor on, I had it all dialed in. Kerry, our guy that rigs our boats out here, did a great job putting it all together, getting the gateway system. I had to switch on my kayak to turn it on and everything. And, you know, I... I I went on YouTube, tried to, you know, look on how to, you know, um, set it up once you're out on the water. Cause there is a, a process that you have to go through. And, and honestly, I was just too lazy to try to configure it all. <laughs> and I ended up not even using it because I just felt like it was too much. And just, t- I, I like to kind of keep it simple as when you see my kayak, you may not think that, but I really try to try to keep it as simple as I can when I'm out there. So mm-hmm. having all that other technology, as far as, um the route playback like we were talking about brad and 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 the ability to control your motor through your fish finder you can do that with the xi3 if you really wanted to you can hit a waypoint on your x on your hds live if you have it all set up and you can draw a route to that waypoint and then you could press go and it'll take you on that route so there is that ability for it yeah it's cool but i don't know why i just (laughs) yeah it's because you got out there and you're like, I just rather fish. That's how yeah, it is. Like, I, just, I can't remember how many times. It took me like almost a year and a half to really even mess with the settings of my fish finder because every time I'd get out there, I'd be like, 
I can't just sit here, dude. I yeah, can't yeah. the same sitting, way. Sit yeah. here and press buttons till I'm like, oh, that looks good, you know. Because yeah. then I'm like, oh, I gotta find fish to see if I'm if they're showing up, right? Yeah. And yeah. Then I'm like, well, I think dude, I found Josh. Them. I have I have to say this really quick. I have a buddy. <laughs> I'm not gonna say his name because it's too embarrassing. But he went out <laughs> his first time out on the kayak. His first time using his new fish finder. It was like a triple shot seven or something like that. And he has it all set up, and he's so stoked. And we get out there, and he's like, dude, there are so many fish right here. They're loaded up right here. And he was on demo mode. <laughs> oh, geez. I was like, I don't see any of these fish. What the heck's wrong with me? And if he had it on demo mode, dude. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's oh, good. Yeah. Uh, it'd be funny, too, if it was telling him, like, what lake it was. And yeah. it's like, even the right one the whole time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude. dude that's oh, on the other side of the u.s man what are you talking about yeah <laughs> but no it took i remember brad i was go up to kaiser lake dude and we'd get yeah. i kept trying to dial it in there and one day i finally was like all right that's it i'm just gonna sit here and do it and i hated it because then i started marking fish i was on the road bed brad mm -hmm. the old one and i'm like oh there's fish that definitely fish and i'm like center drifting over it over and over it trying to like get good definition to where I could really see the bed a lot better than just kind of the way it was. And, um, but yeah, I, I'm the same way, dude. I, there's times, I, there's times I'm like, I don't even like rigging up my kayak. Like, cause I just want to go and get in water. Yeah. Um, like my buddy, Mike, my buddy, Mike Grimsley, he is a Hobie guy and he custom built his own trailer. And when he did that and he's a Hobie guy, he's got, you know, he's got a Torquedo, he, but he has his setup to where it's literally just hook the trailer up and go. Mm -hmm. He's got a place to be able to park this huge trailer. So it like when I was, um, uh, I stayed with him over last summer and I was like, dude, it's so nice to have that ability. Like, you know what I mean? It's just all your stuff's there. Like mm -hmm. the only thing I'd have to do is for me, I just had to take my rods out and my, grab my life jacket. That's it. Just because I was afraid to blow out because I wouldn't strap it against a chair or whatever. But yeah, and I'm like, and then that, that's made my fishing now like kind of a pain. I'm like, now I'm back to my old setup, you know. And I'm like, man, I got to set everything up, take it off, set it up, take it off. And yeah, but um, with what you guys are doing over there, do you guys have plans to like kind of keep going like? I guess like further into the kayak game as far as like what motors would have the kayak option, you know, the smaller uh, shaft length, like, you know, you know how like you've got, you know, higher grade trolling motors that have this or that on it and add it. Do you guys think that motor guide will try to expand that through it or are they just going to pretty much for now just stick with the XI3? It seems like for now they'll just stick with the XI3 because I feel like the most important thing on any trolling motor is anchor mode or GPS pinpoint, and they have that, and yeah. they have it wireless, which is perfect for the kayak. It's you know not a foot pedal. They have that wireless foot pedal, but you know the the remote control just makes it really kayak friendly. Um, whether you're sitting down, you know you can still fish sitting down or standing up. So I feel like right now I I don't really see anything other than maybe something to stow and deploy it for like short term mm -hmm. but long term i'm sure there's going to be innovations done as as you know as who knows lawrence comes out with one or garmin comes out with one for a kayak i'm i'm mm -hmm. sure at some point these other companies are going to get into the game and then that'll push innovation for for all of them to continue to go crazy with the kayak trolling motor in the front for sure yeah yeah. yeah, and you kind of see, like, I mean, uh, there's not, if I remember correctly, I think some people used to run XI5s at first, right? There was some no, that were doing an XI5. Maybe on, like, a yeah. big Hobie. Yeah. I saw I saw the uh, white <clears throat> version on a couple. Well, I think, didn't Drew do an XI5 when he, before, oh, yeah. like, when he was down and he was, remember when he got out of the boat, where was that, in Florida or wherever? And he was, yeah, like, climbing. Yeah, he chain. solo skiff. Yeah, which is a big boat hmm. because you well, don't want to put too much pound. You don't want to put too much thrust on right. the nose of your kayak. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah, I'm sure Brad it. can attest if he has the motor facing the other way, <laughs> yeah, and he forgets it's on full power, which I've done before. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're hitting the deck. Quick. Yeah, 
Yeah. And not only that, but it's a lot of strain against plastic. For you sure, think yeah. about on boats, you know, that's mm-hmm. a lot tougher material. And you sit yeah. there, you, you go too much higher and any kind of, you know, pounds thrust that's going to rip them bolts out over time, you know? For sure. Yeah. But what Bonafide told me, and I'm sure this is the same th- throughout any kayak, is the nose of the kayak is actually the strongest point of the kayak. So yeah. it's, mm-hmm. it's perfect that we're putting that motor you know the bow mount out there because that's the sh- that's where the, all the plastic comes together and it's yeah. it's supposed to be the strongest point too so mm-hmm. that's yeah good. i mean it that's a true point because that's how they store kayaks a lot of times at places that don't have a lot of a lot of room will st- storm on the noses or right. you know they'll storm up vertically so yep um, but one one little <laughs> hack brad that i'm going to share too is that your batteries in your remote will die oh yeah, yeah. And you never want them to die when you're four or five miles offshore. So <laughs> make sure you carry a little screwdriver and some extra triple A's with you at all times. So you can just, all you got to do is switch it out. You don't have to um, reconnect the remote or anything. You just switch mm. the batteries out and you, you're good to go. I was literally thinking that earlier today when I was on the water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the <laughs> worst. Ta- talking about this, all I want to do is get this foot, the wireless foot control. And I want one in my Kilroy. Dude, really Josh, I, I could see you with one of these motors. You would love it on the Kilroy. Yeah. yeah it's, love it. it's it's cool because it's got, I mean, I know it doesn't have like kind of the same internal setups, but it's got internal rod tubes that I don't use. It's kind, yeah. of, kind of garbage, but like you could run wiring through it real easy or yeah, add, yeah. You know, even add it to keep it out of the way, keep it clean. Yeah, and that sort of thing. Because I mean, I really I looked at doing Bixby because I I really like the product too, and I like Torquedo. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like a lot of this stuff. Yeah, um, for but, sure. But when I'm like, man, where am I? Gonna, how am I going to wire that up? Like, because my my tackle box is right there. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, I don't know how I could run this with the steering cords, basically. You know, yeah. with it. so I'm like the bow mounted idea is just it looks. And then yeah. I, I'm a huge fan of the fact that it's, you know, with pinpoint, you know, with anchor lock, that sort of thing. I'm like, that's my jam. Cause I hate, mm-hmm. I hate anchors. I despise them. I just, I hate messing with them. Cause sometimes you just want to be able to go quick, you know, and that's just time. Yeah. It's like, I want to lock here, fish. All right. 10 minutes. Cool. I, I'm not, I ain't want to crank that stupid thing up, especially if you're sitting <laughs> in deep water, but for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, l- let's get back into the the uh, functions of the motor. Right? We we hit on heading lock a little bit. I wanted to talk about GPS and the route thing a little, but I was going to mention heading lock first. Uh, I've noticed that it excels for me pointing up river. If I click it, you, uh, usually one click faster than the current is coming down. Uh, that keeps me straight on track. I'm go- I'm I'm hitting right through these little eddies. I mean, just perfectly straight. I'm just able to cast hands-free i love it yeah i had to throw that in there yeah for sure i mean that's literally like one of the coolest things about it is that because you're hands-free the entire time you don't have to worry about it and when you catch a fish you just press it press it off really quick so you're not you know going away from the fish and it turns off and man that heading lock is (laughs) it's literally what it's literally like everything you need man it's 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 it's, awesome it's perfect for the river i mean I, i think i use that more than spot lock you know yeah yeah unless i'm hitting like a certain piece of structure where i'm i'm downstream from that structure ca- casting upstream you know but yeah um GPS- how does it brad real quick how does it work for you say in that instance say you see um like a, a lay down or whatever and you're about 10 yards past the lay down but you're trying to cast 10 yards up past your lay down right and let it drift down mm-hmm. it, in, into the lay down or next to it or whatever so how is that motor working for you what, what, what are you doing in that scenario to stay in place and make multiple cast uh usually if i'm going upstream and i see that little lay down there i'll, I'll hit the anchor mode for that and then i'll catch at it okay well i'll probably position myself a little bit out towards the middle of the river okay so you're not gonna sit in that current line no, I because I, I, You're gonna I get know there's out gonna of be it. fish there. Yeah, I know there's gonna be fish there. So, Roll I, out. I, yeah, but I'm saying though, if you are your target is out in front of you, you're, you're you know you're not necessarily gonna worry about sitting where you're at because you're gonna be down from mm-hmm. your target 
you're going to throw past your target just like you would normally <laughs> yeah. river fish. So, but you are going to take yourself out of the current line, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Usually. Uh, it's sometimes kind of, it's kind of important to do that because you never know. You see people that get out and they try to use stuff in current lines like that. Like, they, you know, use anchors, try mm -hmm. to slow themselves down or whatever, and they get in trouble. Um, um, so. I'm trying to think. I, I used, uh, well, just take like the railroad bridge in Franklin, for example. Yeah. I, I was, I was, it's a quick current through there. I was, I was yeah. anchored in the current, not moving at all. Yeah. Uh, Dylan was asking me uh, about it. I sent him a video. I was like, this is how legit the GPS is. I was not moving from that spot, no matter how fast that current was. Yeah. If you really want to turn heads when you get to the boat dock, launch your kayak with the motor down, <laughs> pull it out like with no one in it. And everyone's just gonna be like, what the heck is this guy doing? <laughs> And then, just, and then just press pinpoint and it'll just stare at there and walk back to your truck, put your wheels away or whatever you got to do. And then walk up to the dock and walk into your boat and just drive off. <laughs> Dude, I, I want to do, I want to make a video so bad. Cause I saw Derek Brundle do that with his, where yeah. he was ghost, ghost driving it. I'm like, I want to do that, but I'm afraid. And our, <laughs> our launch areas are no dude. It'll go. I want to say I've been at least, Man, dude, I've been at least like 300, no, like 200 feet away from it. And wow. Okay. It stays. I, I think I can just go home. I don't think it matters. Wow. <laughs> That's I'm serious. Cool. So it's just holding its spot. Like, what? Yeah. The remote just turns it off. So, so let's say you were on the dock. How far could you control your kayak before it loses signal? From I'll the go remote? back to you on that. I'll do okay. some R&D. <laughs> <laughs> with someone else in the water <laughs> because i i'm gonna go to a little pond and i'm gonna try some stuff just i'm just gonna get some video you know just yeah. mess around yeah <laughs> that's cool yeah how accurate is the gps like to hold you on a spot yeah, yeah. dude when i when i press it and i'm sitting there i really some people say they feel themselves move a little bit i promise you this i'm not just being biased about it like i don't move mm-hmm I want to say it's like a foot by a foot. Yeah. Because Do you think that might be because you're in a kayak and the weight ratio isn't as significant as like what maybe a boat is. So a lot yeah. of times that's where you hear the 10 foot mark or whatever people might yeah. talk about. Yeah. I don't I sure. like maybe if it gets that boat gets moving, it's a little harder for the trolling motor to catch up. I don't know. I don't, I don't know much about boats, but I've always kind of heard that, you know, it's like, Oh, well it's not true. Jeep like locking you. You're in like a 10 foot radius or whatever. You no know, way, dude. it's not 10 feet for sure. Yeah. I want to say it's at a maximum, maybe two or three, but yeah. dude, mm -hmm. I don't feel it moving. So I, I sit there. I want to say motor guide said within four feet or, but yeah, I, I, mean, that's I, I don't know. I don't know where I got to. <laughs> Yeah. But like, but but like I've you seen said, those videos where it has like a circle around the motor right. and it's like yeah. 10 feet radius or whatever, but no, dude, 10 feet. No, no, it way. no it, like you said, it, I don't notice it moving off my spot at all. No. And it could change with different locations. Who knows? I don't know. But yeah. if you have a Lowrance too, you can put, you know, like the pucks, yeah. the Lowrance mm -hmm. pucks, that'll actually tighten your, your GPS marker. Because the marker's in the head of the motor, mm -hmm. but when you have the NEMA system and everything working together and you have the puck, then you can really dial in your direction that you're facing mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and it, it, makes tightens, it. it tightens it. Yeah, like Grimsley has the Garmin version of that, Brad, and he loves it because he can find true north, yep. you know, like real easy yeah. and all that. So anytime you can add that stuff, it's going to make that, that GPS work a lot better because he loves it on just on his fish finder alone for sure yeah. Yeah. Alone. yeah and i've seen guys put it on the dry pod brad they just put it on it. what they just mount it straight to the dry pod on the bonafide the puck oh okay barry davis has one i think on his boat it's just mm -hmm. right on his dry pod that's interesting yeah hmm. uh, let's talk about the route playback so I, I mentioned to you before we started i've never used the feature so i don't know what it is and i'm too lazy to look at the manual so yeah so you basically just press record, you know, you get out, you press record, you run a route. Let's just say you have your favorite stretch of grass that you want to run the outside of the grass line on. You, you, you follow that grass line, you're, you're fishing and you're like, all right, I want to, I want to go back through there. 
you press re you press one and then it'll save it as one and then when you press one again it'll take you right back on that same route so so after you hit one i mean like is it like a slow jerk or you got to make sure the motor's turned down you want to make sure your motor's turned down every time like okay. heading lock whatever like make sure and you're not standing up and because <laughs> You know, yeah. the thing's not absolutely perfect, but if you're going slow speeds and stuff, it definitely makes a nice mm -hmm. turn for you and stuff. It's not like, it's not like, like super jagged, <laughs> unless you have it on full speed, then it, it does what it does. But it's, it's really nice. My buddy uses it more than myself. Like I told you, I've used it a mm -hmm. few times and it's cool. But like I said, even with the anchor mode, like I use, I, I myself make my own minor adjustments so I don't have to stand sideways on my kayak, right? even though I could. Yeah. So I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I'm going to have to try that cuz I got a few spots spots in mind where I just hit like a tournament last year I just hit the same bank. I went back and forth mm -hmm. back and forth all day long. And the the remote should come on the back of it. There should be a little card that kind of explains that all mm -hmm. the route playbacks and everything for it. And I think there's even a diagram on the website on Motor Guide too if you want to if you lose that card or something, because when I first got it, I kept that card in my kayak. So I kind of mm. remembered, you know, all the different buttons. So it's a good idea. Yeah, it's sweet. I think it does up to eight. Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. Something like that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I was, I was just curious what the numbers were. I didn't, didn't know what it was. I, mm -hmm. I need, I need to read. <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> so how far is your prop? Um, from oh, the yeah. bottom of your boat for so like if somebody's interested in getting one of these what kind of depths are you looking at being able to to attain you know go through without worrying about hitting the motor on the bottom or the prop sorry when i was at gunnersville dude i was in two feet two feet of water and i wasn't hitting anything mm -hmm. so i mean you can definitely get into maybe a foot you know you definitely want to be careful but you can you can maneuver your way through a foot and you can adjust the the shaft so you can if you're if i know i'm in heavy grass like when i was on gunnersville i had my shaft up a little bit but um you can adjust the length of the shaft it has a you know like a something to loosen the neck pull it up tighten it where you want it to stay mm -hmm. which is super cool too you can adjust the height of your prop yeah Do you and then one thing too is like i've hit a rock before so i'm sure people say that like what if you hit a rock so the cool thing about it is if, and I've hit it at like four miles an hour and it releases itself. It doesn't hold tight to itself. It'll release itself and it's like a safety mechanism. So that way it, if it, if you just hit it full force and it stayed locked in, you'd break the shaft. Yeah. But it, it, yeah, it, it pops something in, in the whole mechanism and it, and it loosens itself. So at least it's like kind of like loose when it's, hmm. when it, when you hit the rock, but it's definitely not fun, and if Derek was on here with us, he'd, he'd tell you a story about the, I want to say the Susky River. Oh, yeah. Um, he, he hit one pretty good, but he's never broken a shaft, I don't think, but I've never broken a shaft, and I've hit, I've hit a couple rocks. Sometimes you're just, you're so concentrated on fishing, maybe you're going to get your crankbait out of the rocks, and you're kind of close to shore, and you don't really realize it. You turn, you hit mm -hmm. a rock, but I've, I've never, I've never uh, broken a shaft before. Yeah. yeah. And to go off of that, Josh, I, I pulled, uh, my buddy Matt through riffles that were about 1.1, 1. 1, uh, feet deep. So you can get pretty okay. shallow. And then yeah. if you want to get shallower, just pull your motor up and paddle. And it, it's funny. If you pull it up too high, you, you hear the water splashing in front. It makes it sound like you got a motor on your kayak. Like, yeah. a, no, I'm like, saying like literally, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying like literally pull it up on your boat and just, and yeah. then just paddle the six inch or whatever, however shallow yeah. you want to get. Yeah. Yeah. So. It, it's, it's cool though, man. I like it. Yeah. Well, Actually, yeah. when I was, when I was up at Clear Lake, um, if you guys will kind of end with this and we'll wrap it up yeah. maybe, but um, when I was up at Clear Lake for the bass, uh, for the bass event out there last year, that Russ Snyder's came out and taught us all <laughs> a good lesson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was so excited because I took top 10. I, I kind of knew I took top 10. And I, what I normally do is when I get to the boat ramp, I, you know, I, I take my motor off first and I walk my motor up to my truck 
because I have a bona fide. I don't have wheels on it or anything. So I grab mm -hmm. and then I put my motor in my truck, grab my wheels, go back down to the ramp, put my kayak on the wheels, and then I and then I pull my kayak up without the motor on the front because it's lighter. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of that, that's my normal routine. I thought I did all that, and I literally was went to the award ceremony, super stoked, drove all the way home, got into my got into my garage right here in SoCal, eight hours away. And I'm like, where is my motor? No. And what I did was I pulled my motor off, put it on the side, and I never picked it up. Oh, left, you left it sitting I left, there? I left it sitting there. So some lucky guy <laughs> or girl Dang. took my motor and it was gone forever. But that's the cool thing too, besides that part, is that it does have a quick release bracket. So <laughs> it's super easy to take off and on, but just make sure – when you take it off, make sure you, you take uh, it with you. you. Take it with you, <laughs> dude. That would suck. Yeah, it wasn't fun. I thought <laughs> someone stole it, and then I started to really process what I that whole time after, and I was like, I left it there for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I hate that. I've done that with <laughs> you know with a paddle. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> paddles, rod sleeves. It's not a big deal with a paddle it. until you're like. That's ah, a three hundred dollar paddle. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, cool, well, man. We're yeah. we're we're at that mark. I think we hit it all. It was a good episode. So, heck yeah, I appreciate yeah, you taking the time sure. to come on, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. It was fun. I know if Glad I get a here. if I hit hit up and get a motor guide, I know who to contact. Now you got a lot of good information, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Happy to help. Uh, before we close it out, you want to uh, go through some shout outs and all that stuff? Anybody you want to thank? Yeah, sure, man. Thanks. Uh, first, I'd like to thank, you know, Motor Guide for supporting me. They've been, I've been with them for a couple of years. It's been fun, you know, innovating with them and, and really pushing the limits when it comes to this whole bow mount craze that's going on right now. And it's fun to be a part of their team. And uh, one thing that I'll announce really quick, and I forgot, is that Motor Guide is going to have a team at the National Championship at KBF. And I'm going to say it here first because it's all official. It is going to be myself, Fluke Master, Gene Jensen, Drew Gregory, Alex Cox, and Danny Rebe with New Canoe. So nice. that's, that's a five team guys. right there, man. Yeah, that's, that's our team. five guys. We're coming in hot. We we would have had Derek, but he's he's for sure with New Canoe. So yeah. we're coming for Team New Canoe for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah besides that um bonafide as well ss 127 i love the platform uh they've been they've been good to me and uh it's a great it's a great fishing platform and dakota lithium batteries kayak fishing supplies is an outfitter i work with um you know they, they're a one-stop shop for all your kayaking needs they really specialize in the whole motor guide thing they have everything you need from wiring to mounts to motors to everything you need so you don't have to go searching around for it and nines optics and that's pretty much it man my family my wife supports me all the traveling i do I'm gonna be going to texas in the next couple of weeks for the championship so excited about that and appreciate you guys having me on the show um it's been it's been fun yep i i gotta say one before we end this i the videos that you and your wife make on your instagram is hilarious <laughs> <laughs> thanks man she is the one that actually does all that she's she does some pretty funny reels if you want to go watch her in the yeah. mom scene. Yeah. But thanks. I appreciate that. I'll let her know. Yep. All right, man. Uh, Josh, you want to take it out? Buddy? Yep. Thanks, everybody, for taking the time to listen to another episode of the final cast. And we'll see you next week. And Shane, thanks again, man. You guys have a good night. See ya. Sweet. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle in Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, and fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle in Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water shout out to rocktown adventures located in northern illinois for all your kayaking camping and hiking needs shout out to jig masters jigs when in doubt get the jig out go to jigmasters.com